So we switch gears now on the Rich Eisen Show to bring someone on who knows nothing about fantasy football. It's my dad, Jeffrey Lyons. The hey, Dad. Thanks for checking. Hey. In. How are you, big guy? Mike, line two, line two, oh, Mike. <laughs> He's just talking. Like, Del Tufo got nervous. You got Del Tufo. No, you got Del Tufo. I thought he was calling in on one of the guest lines. He's How you doing, Dad? Phone. Thanks Sorry for thanks that. for checking in. He got the bat line. You know. I trained with the Giants for three seasons, so I know what it's like. I was a field goal kicker, which your grandfather arranged me to train with them. And it's a, it's a tough time for people down in the draft to impress a coach when there are 60 guys on the field, you know. So I feel for those guys, particularly in this kind of weather. You must have been in heaven last night, even though you're watching the Yankees, to see the Field of Dreams game come to life. I know how much that movie means to you. What were your thoughts on the game last night in the corn? Well, you know, I sat next to James Earl Jones, who I, who, who I know, uh, at the critic screening. Most stars don't go to critic screenings. And he doesn't know anything about baseball, yet he's been in so many baseball movies and narrated them. And before the movie started, he turned to me and he said, you know, baseball is zen. Well, I didn't know what that meant. And then I saw the movie and I was in tears. And I looked at him and he, he had a big grin on his face. You know, I, apparently I looked it up and zen is a Japanese way of meditation, and uh, it, it just really got to me. It's my favorite film of the 80s. It's not a baseball movie. It's about fathers and sons. And the actor who played uh, Kinsella's father, who played Kevin Costner's father, had just lost his own father in real life a few weeks before. And it just brought me back to having a catch with my father. And I'm glad we, you and I have those memories. And it was a great, it, it came off very well. You and I were in London to see the Red Sox lose two to the Yankees. But it was baseball in Europe, and this was another thing that's happening. And they're going to do, be doing it every year now, which I think is a great idea. I don't know how you get to that part in Iowa. Uh, I don't know how you get there, but uh, they did it. Jeffrey Lyons joining the Rich Eisen Show, a real P1. I was talking about those listeners, the loyal listeners you have here for the Rich Eisen Show. The big guy's been listening to every episode the last few weeks. <laughs> we appreciate it. Jeffrey, uh, this is Brockman here, fellow uh, New Englander and Red Sox fan. The most important part of last night's game, though, Jeffrey, was the Yankees lost. So Yeah, well, I'm a, I'm a New Yorker. I was born and bred in New York, and that makes me even more diehard and ridiculous being a Red Sox fan. But, uh, <laughs> it makes me more insane than you, Brockman, who grew up in New England. That makes sense. Me growing <laughs> up in Manhattan and skipping my high school, uh, my son's high school graduation because Pedro was pitching. That makes That's me right. insane. <laughs> first things first. Yeah, Pedro you know, is important. In, in the 17th century, there was a Swiss philosopher named Blaise Pascal, no relation to Camilo Pascual, the old starter for the Minnesota Twins, who said the heart has reasons that reason itself knows nothing about. Why did I marry a girl from Chicago? Aren't there a lot of beautiful, wonderful girls in New York? Yeah, but it's your, you can't explain love. <laughs> Back, big facts, Jeffrey Lyons. Did you have a question? Or you, you just, you just, no, you, I was just <laughs> pointing out to him that the most important part of last night's game was not the pageantry and the beauty. It was that the Yankees lost. Yes, it was how it, how it happened. I right. mean, baseball, when you, when you explain baseball to a European and you say if, if your team, if Real Madrid is beating Barcelona, 8-0, as they say, and there are two minutes to go, and the game's over. In baseball, it's over when it's over. And I thought it was an amazing example of why baseball is my favorite sport. There's no clock, and you can always win. It's, most, it's highly unlikely. But that win last night was astonishing. Yeah, and yes, as a Red Sox fan, even though they're on the downside right now, that was big for the Red Sox, too. So it was just sensational. Jeffrey Lyons taking over the Rich Eisen Show. <laughs> ben Lyons in for Rich on now with the big guy. Uh, Mike Del Tufo says there are no great movie, uh, no great sports moments in the 1980s. There were none really for Red Sox fans. Describe to our audience what it was like to be living in New York, from New York, on television in New York as a Red Sox fan during the 1980s. Well, first of all, to go back a little bit, I had to, I, had, I drew the assignment to greet the Yankees coming home in 1978, that horrifying year when the Red Sox blew a 14 game lead, 14 and a half game lead in August. And I had to greet the Yankees at the airport, and some of them recognized me apparently and started giving it to me, and I deserved it, I guess. But wait a minute, the, uh, the, the home run by Dave Henderson to win the American League pennant uh, a couple of games later uh, was one of the great moments of the 80s for Red Sox fans. Not many, but the World Series was great until disaster struck. But uh, you put those behind you, and they're the only team to win four world championships this century. That's, I, I look at those. I have a picture of me holding three of the... Uh, or three of the statues. And I, at, at dire moments like this, when they need to make up so much ground, I think of those good times, too. 
Were you ever scared for your safety, though, riding the train to the Bronx when entire subway cars were chanting, Lion sucks, yeah, Lion well. sucks, because I was terrified. <laughs> Well, I, I appreciate. No, not really. It was all. It was all in good fun, I guess. Uh, although a friend of ours uh, got socked in the face uh, at the Yankee Stadium for wearing a Red Sox hat. But I've worn my Red Sox hat running with the Bulls in Pamplona six times, uh, going up the Nile, explaining to the captain of the boat what uh, you know what, what Red Sox nation is. You, you wear it everywhere. I wore I wore a Red Sox pin on my tuxedo to three Academy Awards. <laughs> If you know you wear it, and people walk up to me on the street in New York, and they say, "Hey, go Red Sox!" So I say, "Where's your pen? I got to share the abuse. Come on, wear, wear something." Hey, Mr. <laughs> Jeff, this is TJ here, and first of all, I want to say congratulations. You raised a very fine young man. TJ. Been having a great time with him. Thanks, man. Um, oh, thank you, thank you. So many things I'd want to ask you, uh, and I'm not going to bring up the '86 <laughs> World Series as a Mets fan, but I will say this to you. Is there any movie, and I'm sure there has to be one, where you watched and you were like, you just panned it, you gave it six thumbs down, you hated it, and then uh, on not with thumbs, you can't judge art with thumbs. Those are my competitors. <laughs> yeah. I can't judge and art with thumbs. Re- re- regretted the review. Is that, is that what your other? Your yeah. Question so, is? but then you went back after you, you published your review and you went back and watched the game. And was like, hmm, maybe I was I was wrong. I'll about tell you this what, one. there is one. Um, Woody Allen, who I like, and I'm not, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not explaining any of the Michigas nonsense in his life. Uh, came to my father's funeral. I can't forget that. Woody Allen uh, made a movie called The Front about the blacklisting, and there were some very funny moments in it, and I didn't think there was, that really happened. And I did the research I should have done beforehand, and I realized there was a lot of gallows humor when these great screenwriters had to use uh, uh, synonym, uh, pseudonyms uh, to, to, to work, and Woody captured that. So I did, an, I did an, almost an apology uh, review of it later, and he thanked me. So that's the only time. It doesn't mean I'm, I, it can't happen again. And your taste changed, too, because Ben's going to tell me I'm on, I'm on the VHS box for Juana Man uh, <laughs> for a quote. So he can have that quote. That's right. You know, but he also likes movies that I don't like. It, it all depends. But it, it, art is such a flexible thing that you, 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 you can't be absolute in anything. And, and, and every, nowadays, especially, everybody's a critic. So uh, I'm just concerned now, now that I'm seeing a lot of movies online, about how the Red Sox are going to fit uh, Schwarberg in their lineup and why Verdugo is taking a five, four or five-day paternity leave when you're <laughs> supposed to take a three-day paternity leave. Come on, get back in the lineup. First things first, you know? I really feel like you That's and Chris Brockman should be best friends. That's a real insight into my dad's fandom <laughs> as a Red Sox fan. Put the baby down and get back in the lineup. <laughs> Fantastic. Come on, Dad. And I really should have gotten him. rid of Brock Holt who oh. threw the slowest pitch in baseball history the other day for a strike, a 31-mile-an-hour pitch, an arc, EFAS pitch for a strike, 31 miles an hour. And, and the guy, it was, it was like Ted Williams had that thrown at him in an all-star game, and he had asked another player, I think Rudy York, he asked him, how should I face this guy who's going to throw me an EFAS pitch? And he told him, and the second pitch that the, that the pitcher threw wound up in the Red Sox bull, uh, in, in the bullpen. So there is a way to hit those guys. These things play, I, I go over lineups when I'm trying to go to sleep. I go over old lineups to see what see how they can improve. And you have no idea. Ben has an idea of the obsession, but you guys don't. Oh, Maybe no, he's, he's, he's been filling us in. I've got a new book out called The Boston Red Sox All-Time uh, All-Stars, which picks every player at every position and the greatest of all time and honorable mentions. And, and also a chapter on players who didn't know wore the Red Sox uniform on their way to Cooperstown. And the Red Sox are the only team to have two players to get three hits in one inning. That's a record that will never be broken. Only team to have two guys nicknamed the Hawk. Can you name them? Ben, can you name the two Ken guys? Ken Harrelson is one. Yeah. Ken Harrelson no, Andre, is one. And ben, Andre Dawson. You saw the other guy named the Hawk. Andre Dawson. Andre Dawson. Andre Dawson. Andre Dawson. Yeah. You saw him throw out a guy, not as a Red Sox, but he threw a guy out at the plate, a guy named Caccini, I think, who, who played up in a borrowed uniform. So there are all sorts of quirks with the team. They were also the last team to integrate, too, because their owner was racist. They tried out two young players named Jackie Robinson and Willie Mays, and I think Roberto Clemente, and their racist management said, uh, get them off the field. Yeah, Can you imagine having those worse. three on your team? So that's, you know, love is not perfect, but uh, those people are long gone, thank goodness. Jeffrey Lyons on the Rich Eisen Show, the first Michigas on the, on the Rich Eisen <laughs> right. Show in show history, I believe. Well, uh, Rich, Rich, says, Rich, Rich says, says it all the time. Oh, okay. Rich says it, yeah. 
First time when I was on this week. Uh, Dad, I will see you next week out in Long Island. I look forward to it. Thanks for checking in. Thanks, guys. It's been it's been great listening all week. I, I do listen to the show otherwise, but not quite as closely as when Ben is co-hosting. <laughs> understandable. So that's, uh, understandable, I hope. So. Jeffrey, you're meant Thank to be you. well. Yeah, Tell man. Mom I love her. Pleasure love you talking guys. to you. I'll see you next week. Uh, all right. Thanks, guys. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.